Hello, my name is Maddie and you are watching True Summer Knits. It is time, the part of the year where everyone starts posting their Christmas gift knitting guides and Christmas knitting patterns and yes, I'm doing the same thing. But instead of just doing a gift guide, I've created this video and assembled a bunch of different patterns for everything related to Christmas knitting. I've got gifts for everybody, I've got a bunch of gifts in different categories. I've got Christmas decor you can knit, and I've got Christmas sweaters to make for yourself to wear on Christmas Day. So I've got everything, I've got it all covered. And it's a lot, I've got a bunch of patterns we're going to have to talk about, so we are going to get right into it. Let's get started. So the first segment we are going to talk about is gifts, of course. Probably the reason why most people clicked on this video. As of today, it is almost December 1st, so we are running so we are on crunch time, people. We gotta get those gifts knitted. So before I get into the patterns, I wanna kind of talk about how to approach the gift knitting process and how to hopefully make it not miserable and maybe even enjoyable. So first, I'm gonna talk about the three things that you really need to consider when you are going to be gift knitting something. So you've got time, effort, and practicality. So first, you wanna consider time. How much time do I have? How much time is it going to take for me to complete these projects that I've picked out? If you're starting knitting today, you have a month, maybe you could complete one big item if you work only on that item. Or if you want to make gifts for different people, you're going to have to knit smaller things. And even then, even if it's something small, it takes you a few days, don't say, oh, it takes me a few days, I can knit 20, and then run yourself ragged trying to complete these things. You know what I mean? So you really got to prioritize what's important and how long you have to get that done. So make a plan ahead of time about what you're going to knit and who you're going to knit it for and how many things you're going to knit and keep it realistic. Then effort. So if you, you have to remember that it might sound fun. The idea of knitting something might sound fun, but if it's not at least somewhat enjoyable, you're not going to do it. So if, if you really like the look of some cable or lace project, but you just don't think you'll feel like actually working on it, then maybe it would be better just to knit something in the stockinette, and enjoy yourself, watch TV while you do it, and then it'll be easier to get done, it'll be fun. Or if you want to have one complicated gift knit and one more simple gift knit so you can do what you feel like, just don't pick something that you're not going to enjoy making. And remember, if you're making stuff for someone who doesn't knit, you can keep it simple because they probably don't know either way, you know? So don't put more effort or less effort in it than what will make it enjoyable for you to work on. And then practicality. I think we all try to consider this when we're making gifts. Will they use it? Uh, is it something they, they want or need or enjoy? And then fibers. Is it something they can take care of or are they willing to take care of it? Colors. Do they wear colors like that, or will it match with their wardrobe? Consider those things to make the gift as enjoyable for the gift recipient as it is for you to make it. Otherwise, it's just it sucks to put a lot of time into something and they don't want it, and it's not it's not their fault if someone if you make something for someone they don't want or need. It's kind of I'm sure they appreciate the thought, but if you didn't if you didn't take time to think about what they would actually want or use, that's kind of on you. But we talked about those things, definitely considered those, but now we're going to get straight into patterns. So I've divided it into a bunch of little categories, and the first category we're going to start with is fashion accessories. That's kind of vague, but it is what it is. So this category is like beanies, shawls, scarves. Again, I've got some bigger projects in here, but if you're doing a bigger project, and you're starting this late in the game, maybe just knit that. So I've got two shawls, one that's a little easier and quicker, and one that's a little bit more involved, but they're both super cute. So the first one that's the easier one, or simpler, I guess is a better way to put it, is the Venezia shawl. This is a pretty simple shawl. You've got the two decreasing ends, and I believe this one is designed to just take one skein of yarn. It's a fingering weight project, but it's knit on big needles, so you're knitting it in 4.5 millimeter needles. So one skein of yarn, a relatively quick knit. It's very like feminine and airy and pretty. 
it's definitely more of a fashion statement than a warmth thing, but I think any woman who's, like, very feminine and likes to, you know, dress up and has, like, a, their sense of style, if this isn't a color that went with their wardrobe, I think it'd be a very useful piece for a lot of people. If I was not already knitting a different shawl scarf thing for my mother-in-law, I would think this would be a really good pattern for that. And if it's got one skein of yarn on big nails, it can't take too long. She designed it to be used with, like, special skeins, but again, consider fiber choice and who is going to be receiving it. It also has a very simple stitch pattern. There is the lace on the edges, and this is kind of like twisted ribbing, but overall it's still pretty simple. The other shawl pattern I have is the Sunday morning shawl, which is super beautiful, and I can literally picture this like in the fall, winter months, putting on the shawl, making a cup of coffee, and going outside on your porch or whatever, and just wearing this and like sitting early in the morning. This is just so cute and perfect for that. But like I said, this is a little more involved, but this is a free pattern as well. Got a lot of free patterns in this video today. So this is a DK weight knit, but it's, it's kind of larger. But overall, it's still a pretty simple knit. It's basically stripes of ribbing and stockinette. And then on the edging, she has this, these little bobbles. So those would definitely be the hardest, but I still don't think bobbles are too difficult to make. So in terms of ability, I don't think it's complicated, but I feel like this would definitely take longer to create. So if you want to do this, I would get started soon. But it's a really beautiful shawl pattern, and I think this is like a very cool mom pattern. Like I feel like those cool stylish moms would really get a lot out of this shawl. Emphasis on cool though, I'm not saying anything negative about moms. I like this shawl a lot. Then I've got a scarf pattern. This is the Berlin scarf. You might have seen this pattern before. It's a more popular one. But this is a kind of chunky weight knit, but still somewhat lightweight because it's the brushed alpaca from Santa's Garn. The gauge is 13 stitches per four inch, and it's basically just a big stockinette tube with little tassels on the end. So very simple to make. It's bigger, but probably wouldn't take super long because of the, the large gauge. And it is super fashionable. Um, I am not fashionable enough to pull off this big scarf, but I am sure some you guys know someone who is, and they would love this. In like a neutral beige, I feel like this would look good on anybody. It's, it's a really versatile pattern, so this would be a good gift. And it's very relaxing to just knit a tube with stuck in it, so pleasurable as well. I've got two fingerless mitten patterns on here. The first one is simply called fingerless mittens. And it is a free pattern. It's just stockinette with a little bit of ribbing on the edge. It's a lot like the Penny Gloves by Petite Knit. So, but this pattern is free. And even though it's free, it does have multiple sizes. It is all based on your hand circumference, but it goes from 6 inches to 11 inches. So good size range. And it's a DK weight knit. Wouldn't take much yarn, wouldn't take much time. And, um, I just think it's, it's just a great gift. It's knit bottom up, which apparently is from the wrist to the top. But yeah, you could even use like a nice quality yarn if the people will take care of it. And it can just be like a little nice luxury piece for someone to have. But if you want more of a textured piece, this I think is marketed towards men and it does seem to have less of a size range. Well, it might be. I'm not really sh I don't know hand sizes, but it goes from six inches to nine inches. It's got three sizes. But these are the Ajax mitts. It's like really hard to say for some reason. And it's just got these, these cable patterns on them. They're really cute. I think they're really good for masculine or feminine people. I think they work for either one. And they're just really pretty. And this is also a DK weight knit. But obviously it's going to be a little more involved than just the stockinette ones. But it's still a very small item. So it's a quick knit. And the texture makes it seem like you put a lot more work into it, even if you didn't, you know what I mean? We've got some hat patterns. So I've got three hat patterns, two of which are beanies. The first one is a free pattern. This is the classic ribbed, classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho. It is exactly what it sounds like. It is a classic ribbed hat. It's got a bunch of different sizes from baby to adult large, and it's pretty simple. It's a DK weight knit. 
You could, again, use something really nice or really something really soft, do it in a color that the recipient would really like, and uh, yeah, this works for men, women. I've got another pattern that's a beanie that's very similar. The only difference is that the crown is a lot tighter fitting, so I feel like it gives off either a more masculine or a more hipster look. I can't really decide which one. But that is the My Fisherman hat. This one's not free, but it's another ribbed. It's a... I think the brim has like 2 by 2 ribbing. But like I said, the, the crown is meant to be fitted towards your head, which I feel like gives it a more masculine look to me. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's just vibes. But it does come in three sizes. So it's also DK weight. They're both very similar, but gives you an option. I'm also going to talk about the Boyfriend set, which is a combo hat and scarf pattern. It's free, and it's meant to be more masculine. Obviously, it's called the Boyfriend set, and obviously it would work for either, but it's just got this uh, broken rib stitch that I feel like that kind of knit pearl texture can lend itself to look more masculine than some other textures. I don't know why that is, but it's got a matching hat and a matching scarf. You could knit this for anybody, but it is would definitely work for men, and uh, it's free. So there you go. This is a worsted weight knit. She, the designer used Malabrigo Rios, so you could use any worsted weight yarn. But it, the only size, it's only one size available. So uh, I guess be considerate about the hat pattern, or you could use a different free hat pattern that has more sizes. But I don't know. I've never knit a hat before. But I really liked the, the way this one looked. The other hat pattern I have is more just a hat, it is not a beanie, and this is definitely for a very stylish woman that I am not. I do not think I could pull off this hat, but it's the beret number no. 3 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is a felted beret, so you just basically knit a big circle and somehow you add the shaping, I'm not really sure how. I know usually once they felt it, they tell you to stick it like a dinner plate inside, I guess it helps keep its shape. But I'm not really sure how you get that shape to begin with. But uh, it's felted, so you knit like this huge hat, and then you throw it in the washing machine, and it has to be wool, so it felts. But I feel like, I don't think felted wool is too hard to take care of, because it's already been felted. So I feel like you could give this to somebody that might not, would not be able to take care of like a pure wool piece, but could take care of this. This is definitely a riskier gift. You have to know that the person who's receiving it is the kind of person to wear one, but uh, the person who would wear it would love it. If you know that person, they would absolutely love this. While I'm on the topic of felted items, this is another men's pattern. It's a men's loafer slipper pattern, which is super cool. I feel like dads love house shoes and house socks. Everyone does, but dads especially. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is a loafer looking pattern, and again, thrown in the washing machine and felted, and it just creates nice comfy house shoes. It does have a bunch of different sizes, it's just got, I think it's shoe sizes, so it goes from 8 to 14, so that's a pretty good size range. I think most men's feet would fall into that range. And it's not, uh, it's very simple, very cool. I, I really like this one, I think my dad would get a lot of use out of this. Then I've got a few sock patterns. Um, both of these socks are geared towards men, kind of. Obviously, they can be either, but I was trying to find... I feel like in the other categories, it was a little harder to find gifts for men, so a lot more in this category are aimed towards men. First one is Father's New Socks, which I actually saved months ago because I thought River would get a lot of use out of it, my husband. They were kind of like dress socks, or at least the, I, the pictures make me think they're dress socks because the man is wearing dress shoes with them. It's like a slip stitch color work pattern. Um, it takes two colors, but it looks a little more complex because the darker color that the designer used is like variegated or tonal. And I just think this looks really nice. I think it's like a very fancy pair of socks. And um, I think this would be a great pair of dress socks to give to a man in your life. It does seem like it only fits one size, so I definitely would be careful with that because it doesn't even say what size it is, but Still, really cool looking. Then I've got another free sock pattern. This is the Petty Harbor. Uh, both of these next sock patterns are just simple textured socks. There's not too much texture, so it's not like crazy difficult, but there's enough to keep you engaged. 
I also think both of these sock patterns are, they have texture in a way that you could do dark colors because I think most men probably want darker colored socks. So they can be darker and the texture can still show. Like with some cables or more intricate textures, you kind of have to use a lighter color or the texture just gets lost. But I think this pattern and the other pattern both work fine for that. And this does come in three sizes, small, medium, or large. The other pattern is more of a house socks pattern because it's a DK weight knit and it's called Whiskey Neat. It's very similar to the other one. It's just like a knit pearl texture, but I just feel like house socks is a very dad thing. Um, so I just thought this is a good pattern for that. It's not a free pattern like the other one, but it's like a DK weight knit and uh, it's got five sizes. So yeah, I think DK weight socks are like the perfect house socks. Or I don't have a pattern for this, but if you're wanting to make house socks for somebody, you could find a DK weight, weight pattern or even just do a DK weight vanilla sock, but use a strand of mohair and a strand of fingering or sport weight. Uh, you don't need to use sock yarn for that because the mohair strengthens it, but I feel like a pair of fluffy mohair socks would be very luxurious and be like a nice house sock that you have to take very good care of. The last couple patterns are all these hair accessories, which I feel like are very easy and you can bundle them together, or you could make them and kind of throw them in as a stocking stuffer, or you could, you know, buy some other items and combine them all to make like a overall larger gift. But the first one is very straightforward. It's a scrunchie pattern, it comes in three different sizes, and it's the Soho scrunchie. I think this is a very classic gift. I've never knit one, but I imagine you could knit it in like an hour or two. And uh, it'd be like a personalized item. You could knit it in whatever color the recipient wants. It'd be cool if you had like some silk yarn, not like barrette silk, but like mulberry silk yarn left over. You could knit like a silk scrunchie for like bedtime. Um, yeah, it's really cool. And I like that it has three different sizes. So you can make a little set and you could combine it with other hair products or something. But yeah, it's, just, it's a simple gift and this is a free pattern. The other hair thing that I thought would be really nice to either combined together or with like a gift set is the almond headband which is another free pattern. It's one of those thick headbands that's twisted and I have this vision of like either knitting it in a very soft superwash merino or if you're willing to work with like acrylic yarns you could find like a really fluffy acrylic yarn and knit this with it and it could be like one of those spa headbands that were really big in like 2022 and they're just useful in general. Like when you're washing your face or you're doing like a face mask and you have the pretty headband. I think that would be super cute. And you could combine it with a little gift set with like, you know, hair products or things to, things to make a bigger gift basket. I just think it would be really cute. And this is another free pattern. The next category of gifts is practical gifts. Now that is a kind of wide range of patterns, but this might be the biggest set of patterns so far. I define practical gifts as something you could use, not something you could wear, something you can use. It's kind of a mix of home decor and some other practical items, but I've got 19 of these, so we're just going to get right into it. I've got two patterns for cute, stylish dish towels. I feel like these can be really nice and uh, you could, you know, if you've been in the person's kitchen, you could make something that would go with their kitchen. You can make a little set. If they like cooking or something, you could knit a couple of these and maybe put in like some kind of nice cooking thing, like a nice wooden cut cutting board or a, like a pot or a pan, like a nice one. And I feel like that would make like a little nice gift set. So the two patterns I have are both free, which is nice because they're just squares. The first one is the farmhouse dish, farmhouse dish towels by Pearl Soho. I think both of these are by Pearl Soho. It's just this little textured stitch pattern square. The way the stitch pattern is done makes it kind of look like there are stripes on it. And then you go back and add the color at the top. I'm assuming that's just duplicate stitched on, but it might be part of the pattern, I'm not sure. But I feel like these are really stylish, very modern, and I think you know the kind of people that this would look good in their kitchen, you know what I mean? I think it would look good in my kitchen. I might have to make myself some to repaint my, my kitchen verse, not fitting the vibe. But I have butcher block. If the recipient has butcher block, these dish towels work great. 
The other set is just as cute, but a little more involved to make. It's also by Pearl Soho, and it's the tin ceiling washcloth and hand towel. Okay, that's what I'm, that's what I'm reading. I can't read. It's got three different sizes. You can make another little set. And she's got this, like, diamond texture pattern on it that is really pretty. I feel like these would be really good for, like, a nice bathroom guest towel. But, uh, you know, options are endless. But both of these, if you're making a dishcloth, I'm sure I don't need to tell you, but make it in cotton or linen, something washable, because the point of hand towels or washcloths is that you wash them constantly. So make sure you remember that when you're picking out the yarn for these patterns. This next pattern is the only one that's really like it. It's a kind of like a welcome mat. I feel like something like this is better for inside, but it could work for like a porch or something. It's a free pattern. It's the Welcome Home Herringbone Rug. And it's a really cute herringbone stitch rug or like a entryway mat. Or there's a lot of places you could put this. You could even put it like in front of your sink in the kitchen. I just think this is really cute and simple and uh, very modern, very stylish. It doesn't even look like it'd be knitted, I feel like. If you look at a picture of it, it looks like something you would buy. Um, it's just a rectangle with the herringbone pattern and it's got tassels in the end and it is adorable and it's a free pattern. It actually it's hold three strands of worsted weight cotton together so it's very thick and must just not take long to make at all because that's very bulky yarn. I've got two different patterns for baskets which I think is a really practical gift. Just like these cute knitted baskets. Um, I'm sure there's lots of crochet options for them too. I've never used them but I feel like these are really cute. They can even be, they're really good for like home organization and they're really like nice looking and stylish, especially the kind of woodwick one. And I feel like this could also double as like the way you wrap your present. Like you could put gifts or like, you know, snacks or treats inside of it and give them the basket with like the gift inside, you know what I mean? But these are just really nice and I would love to have some for like around the house. The first one is the Bokiria basket which is the one that kind of looks like those like wood, uh, gosh, what do you call them? I said woodwick, but I think I mean, gosh, maybe like the raffia bags. I don't know. I can't think of the word I'm trying to find, but I think you know what I mean. It just looks really natural and like a kind of farmhouse style. It's knit in linen stitch, which, which is like a bulkier stitch, and it's a worsted weight pattern. And it comes in two sizes, so you can make like a little set if you wanted to, but I think these are pretty simple to make. It's just a lot of rectangular knitting. The other basket pattern I have is very similar. This is done in seed stitch, which I think is very similar to linen stitch. I can't remember what exactly they are, but I know they're similar. But this also has three sizes, and again, you can knit a little set. They are a little less stylized than the Bokiria basket, but still would look really nice around the house. You could even, like, if you really wanted to make these special, you could knit them and, like, monogram them or something. Uh, you know, like, do, like, duplicate stitch on top with some kind of initial or names. But very practical, very nice. I would love to have some of these for just home organization that looks neat. I've got some patterns for coasters. So a simple one that I feel like would go with most people's decor is the Everyday Mug Rug, which is what it says. It's just a little squ It's a lot like the herringbone rug pattern, but for a for a mug. So it's tiny, tiny little rectangle, and it's got little tassels, and it's just like a little coaster. Super cute. The other patterns, if you have pet owners, if you if you have friends that are pet owners, then you can do the dog life or the cat life coasters. It's just a set of four coasters with little dogs or cats on them. Bonus points for knitting these, but using the color of the owner's pets in the coasters. So like I have three cats, you could, if you knit them, like you had a black cat and a calico cat and a gray cat, it'd be like, oh, those are my cats. And you could have cute little coasters of your animals or their animals. I think that that's a really cute idea. Another cute little pattern I found that is, you know, practical for especially like a women or people who really take pride in like decorating their house and having nice smells. This is lavender and lace, and it's just a little sachet pattern. If you've never used a sachet, it's basically like a little tiny bag, and you put like dried herbs in it, and you can stick them in like drawers or around the house, and it just 
adds some nice smell. So this would be extremely easy to knit. They're absolutely tiny. They're very cute. You can tie them off a little ribbon. You could even buy them some dried herbs to go with it so they don't have to get their own. It's just a really sweet little pattern. I think like my grandma would really like this. I think it's just a nice little, little add-on gift. Got a couple gifts for readers. Got two different patterns I found for like a Kindle cover. Uh, one of them's free and it's just like a stockinette one. It's it has stripes, but it could just be a sample of pattern for you to just knit a stockinette one with a ribbed edge. And that's just called Kindle Cover Cozy. And then the other pattern is a little bit more texturally involved, the color work pattern. And it's the Kindle and iPhone bags. And it's worked in little, little daisy stitch is what she calls them. And you just do alternate the colors and she used a little ribbon to tie it off of the top. And I think it's really cute. I also found a pattern for three knitted bookmarks, which it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just three different textured bookmarks, which I feel like is a very sweet little gift. Especially if you know there's a book someone wants and you knit a little bookmark and put it in the book. I feel like that'd be a sweet gift. For the dads out there, I thought this would be a really good pattern. It's classic can cozy. So it's literally just a ribbed tube and you stick a beer in it or, or a can of soda. I feel like that'd be really good for dads or men who like to watch sports and drink beer. So I think most of them like that, as far as I know. So yeah, that's just a cute little pattern. It's ribbed, you can customize the colors however you want. It's a nice, it's a nice idea. This one is a really cute pattern too. It's the Suds and Bubbles bath mat. You would definitely need to knit this in like an acrylic yarn, like maybe like a chenille yarn. It's just a little bath mat. It's really cute. It's like very fluffy. I think any craft store sells those chenille yarns that people use for like uh, amigurumi. I think that would be a really good yarn for this. The person that made it used a Sherpa yarn by Lion Brand. Any fluffy yarn. And um, again, maybe try to figure out what colors this person has in their bathroom so it can match. But uh, I want to make myself one of these. It's really cute. It's a jumbo yarn weight pattern. So, big yarn. <laughs> but it's really cute. I've got a couple of pillow cover patterns, which I think are a really nice gift. I feel like these might be best worked in a set of two, but obviously you got to do what you can. But they're both super cute. I say this over and over again, try to figure out the colors of the person's living room or bedroom, wherever you think they should go. But this is, the first one is the Minto Cushion. It's just a cabled pillow cover. What I like about this pattern is it comes in different sizes. So you can have a rectangular one or a square one. And if you're knitting a pillow or a pillow cover, I would definitely buy the pillow insert and just give that to them with the pillow in it. I wouldn't just give them the pillow cover. I'm sure you can figure that one out on your own. But still, it's a worsted weight pattern knit on 4mm needles, so I don't think it would take too long. It's a little more involved with a cable pattern, but... The other pillow pattern I have is a free pattern. It's the Labyrinth Pillow. It's another textured pattern, but it's all knit knits and pearls. It is really cute. I think it would look really cute in anyone's living room. And again, it's a worsted weight pattern, so I don't think either of these would take too long. But again, I feel like you should knit it in like a set. This next one is something a little different. I've never seen a pattern for this, but it's a sleep mask with like a little bag that you can put the sleep mask in. I feel like if I was gonna do this, I would do like Luminance Lace by Knit Picks or like another Mulberry Silk yarn and knit it in that because then because then it would be like very soft and luxurious and a sleep a silk sleep mask. But it's a light fingering pattern, so Luminance Lace would definitely work. You wouldn't need much of it. You could even do a set where you knit like the sleep mask in the silk and then with the leftover yarn you could knit like some silk scrunchies. That would be really nice. Now I kind of want that. They have another little pouch in that pattern. I was trying to figure out what it's for. It's for earplugs apparently. So yeah, knitted luxury, am I right? I did include a little blanket pattern in there too. It's the Making Plans blanket. It's got a bunch of different sizes. So you can knit a small one, but it's also knit with worsted weight yarn. So if you're going to knit a blanket, this one wouldn't be too bad. It's super cute. It's textured. I feel like it'd be simple to make, but you just have to be very careful with your time if you're knitting a blanket. Another blanket I have that's a thicker yarn is the Billowy Quilted Throw Blanket. And this is a bulky weight pattern, so definitely would be faster. It's got, it's got like the uh, seersucker pattern. It literally does look quilted. It's super cute. And another, and this is another pattern that you could probably 
get out pretty fast for a blanket if you want to give someone a blanket. So I've got another little subcategory for bags. I've got four bag patterns because I just feel like it's its own little category. But I've got different bags for different styles of women, I guess, if, you, if that makes sense. The first pattern is a petite knit pattern, uh, but I'm obsessed with this bag. Actually, after I found this bag while researching this video, I bought yarn to make it. So I'm super excited to make this bag because it is adorable. It's the winter clutch. She's got a few different clutch patterns, but it's kind of like one of those vintage patterns or vintage bags that has the frame. She sells the frame and the chain, but you can also buy them off Amazon for cheaper. If you look up purse frame and you get the one that's seven, seven and a half inches or seven inches, that'll work perfectly for this. That's what I got. But it's just this cute little textured pattern. Um, she's got, she knits hers in a slightly fluffy pattern, a slightly fluffy yarn. It's a sport weight or a DK. I decided to get a fingering weight and a mohair held together, which I don't think will be a problem meeting gauge. But you have to make sure you definitely do a gauge swatch for this since you need it to fit that frame. But overall, I don't think it would take too long and it'd be a fun, a really fun thing to make. And if you carefully consider the neutral palette of the person you're making it for, it could be a very versatile gift. And it is just extremely beautiful. But that would be for like a very more elegant, stylish person and it would be a bag more for like um, dressing up a little bit or maybe going out so it's not so much can be like their everyday bag so if you if it's a very casual person who doesn't dress up much this might not be the choice for them if it is a person who is more casual I think a pattern tote bag would be better it still has like some elegance to it but the tote bag thin thin style is much more wearable on like an everyday basis. So the bag I picked is the Pamela bag. It's just a lace bag. This definitely would take longer. So this would be like a one, a one gift project if you're starting this now. But it's really cute. Again, you can knit it in a nice neutral and this could be worn like every day, but it still has like a little bit of luxury and elegance from the lace texture. And this is sport weight pattern. And for one of these, I would knit it in probably some kind of cotton or linens that can be washed, you know? Because tote bags, I feel like they get a lot of a lot of use. For someone who has like more of a trendy, modern, colorful style, they found this bag, the picnic bag, which is, it's really cute. It also works very well as like a project bag if you're making a gift for a knitter. And it's just this gingham bucket bag that is adorable and I think would be really good for people who are, you know, more modern, more fun, they have like, like to have more statement pieces. So I feel like that is a bag that would really work for those kind of people. And the last one is kind of a mixture of casual and elegant. It's more of like a toned down, uh, everyday elegant type of style. And that is the Dumpling Bag by Pearl Soho. It's, it's interesting, but it's not like over the top. So I feel like this is a good pattern for people who don't necessarily fit into the other categories, but still have St a style that they like, and it's free pattern. I think this pattern went viral a little while ago, but it doesn't look like it would take too long to make. It's all... The last two categories for gifts are small, but very cute. So I've got kids gifts, either a gift for a kid or a person with a kid. I've only got three, and two of them are stuffed animals. The first one is a bluey stuffy. If you've met a kid, they love Bluey. They're obsessed. So give this to the child in your life. They've probably seen Bluey. I've seen Bluey, it's amazing. Whenever we go out, we put on Bluey on the TV so my dog will be less stressed. I don't know if it works, but we do it anyway. But yeah, this is just really cute little, little pattern for Bluey. The other one is another stuffed animal, but it's a more classic stuffed animal. Uh, it's adorable. I want to knit this for every child in the world. It's just so cute. It's like a very aesthetic uh, stuffed animal. It's Happy Bunny, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a nice Happy Bunny stuffed animal. I love it. I love those little bunnies. They're so cute. And there's a little pattern in there, too, for a little bunny cardigan and a little bunny hat, which is adorable. So they can play dress up with their bunny. The third one is uh, another popular kids pattern. I just think it's super cute. The Baby Bear Bonnet by Knitting for Olive. Uh, these are the only patterns I'm including because I, I didn't want to pick garments because I feel like if you want to knit a kid a garment, 
you know it's not going to take long and you could pick out something that will work for like style wise for that particular kid because baby knits really don't take long at all so I didn't want to just give a bunch of baby sweaters when it's probably easier for you to just go and look through baby sweater patterns on your own to see maybe what the parent thinks the kid would like or what the parent would like so these are just more like little items you could gift a child and then I've got a few gifts for pets or people who have pets uh, I've got three dog sweaters on here which are adorable I need to knit my dog a sweater because it's getting chilly and she's tiny and we go on walks at night and I know she's getting cold so the first one is a free pattern this is the one I'm actually gonna knit my dog because it's free and it's simple it's the Portland Raglan dog sweater it's just a really cute little Raglan dog sweater with uh, little sleeves. I don't know, it's super cute. I really like it. There's really not much to say about these. They're just little dog sweaters. But it's a DK weight knit. You know, you can knit your dog a little, little wool sweater so that they stay warm. Might want to do super wash if it's an animal because, you know, you know what dogs are like. But it's got six sizes. So just measure, measure the little dog's chest and you are good to go. Then there's the Lucky Dog sweater, which is paid. It kind of has a different look to it. It's still stuck in that sweater. It's just stuck in it, but then it's got, I think, 2x2 two two rib. If, I, if I'm seeing it correctly, that's what it looks like. And this also has six sizes. And then finally, if your dog is super fancy, you have the Cable Dog sweater, which is just a all-over cabled dog sweater. So my dog is not cool enough for one of these, but if you have a fancy, elegant, um, rich dog, then this would look super good on them, I'm sure. I mean, I gotta show you some of the, the example photos of the dogs. They are way too cute in their cabled dog sweater. This one only comes in three sizes, though. And then I've got the tiny window cap, because I feel like for me, this is more for the pet owner, but I feel like if someone knit like little tiny cats that matched my cats in real life, I feel like that'd be such a sweet gift. Like you could just stick on your desk at work or somewhere where you see it. It's just like a little, really sweet little gift that doesn't take much effort, you know? Uh, so it's a free pattern. If you have a cat owner in your life, knit them a tiny cat that is the same color as their cat. They will love it. And then for cat owners as well, or your cat, I found a pattern for a simple cat toy, which is just a little mouse. Um, I think my cats would love playing with this. Uh, I bet a toy like this, you could even put catnip in it, and cats would really like it. So that's another one that's free. So those are all the gift nets I have. That was a lot, and man, that took a long time. So we're going to have to get right into the other categories, starting with Christmas decor. The second category that we have other than gifts is Christmas decor, or just general Christmas themed knitting. Most of these are ornaments, but uh, I've got some other ones that are really nice in here. So I feel like knitted Christmas decorations or ornaments are really sweet, especially because you could knit some and you know, they take enough effort that I feel like over time you can collect them. And in the future you can see what you've knitted and they'll kind of remind you of that Christmas or that year, you know? So I've got the mitten ornament, which is a pattern that can be used for any size yarn, which will give you like obviously different size mittens. But it's just a cute little simple mitten with like a tiny, I don't know if it's a real cable, I think it's a faux cable, but you could bang these out pretty quick, you could get a few of them. All of these ornament patterns too, you could also put like make a garland out of them and put them like on your mantel place or on like a railing or something, that would be very cute. There's also the field wreath pattern, which is just a little tiny wreath that you could put on your tree. Or again, you could put on a garland or you could stick it on a gingerbread house. I feel like that would be really cute. And these things must take like no time at all. And again, they're meant for any gauge so you can get different size wreaths. I looked for a full size Christmas wreath because I thought that would be an interesting thing to knit. I couldn't find any that I liked, but uh, Someone should someone should design one that looks cool and like it looks like a real wreath. I would I would knit one and I would put it on my front door. The next one is the cozy Christmas combo, which is very useful. This one has little tiny sweaters. It's got a little tiny Christmas hat, and then it's got uh, little tiny stockings. So really useful. You could just make a bunch of different combos. You could put little initials in the sweater. Adorable. I really need to knit myself a tiny sweater this year. I, I really like the tiny sweaters. And that's a DK weight pattern. So DK weight's a pretty 
you probably have scraps that you can use to knit this with. The next one is Cherry Cordial Tree Skirt. I really like tree skirts and I would like to knit one, but I, I didn't find many patterns for it and I didn't find many that I liked. This was the only one I really liked, but it's a jumbo yarn pattern. So obviously there's, I don't know that I'd have to go to a craft store and find like a jumbo yarn pattern. I don't have needles I could use for them, but it does look really nice. I just would like to maybe create my own maybe next year that is a thinner gauge and looks nice still. But if you like jumbo yarns, it's a good pattern. And it is really a pretty tree skirt. It's a free pattern. It's uh, from Barocco. So very nice, very cute. Another ornament pattern I found is a another collection of uh, ornaments, ornament covers, I guess, that go on, you know, the Christmas balls. And this pattern is literally called Christmas balls, which is a great name. And it's just all these little different color work patterns for ornaments that are Christmas related, like Christmas trees, uh, candy canes, what have you. Very nice little collection of patterns. Then I found this cushion. Uh, it's Dancing Ranger cushion. I feel like this is a really nice one because it's very subtle. Like, you could leave it up for longer than just Christmas, but it still is like a Christmas pattern that really is subtle and like it doesn't feel kitschy or anything, which I think is a really nice option for Christmas decor. It's just a color work cushion pattern with this like nice elegant reindeer design, but like I said, it's still very nice looking. I don't know how to, I'm using, that's a really lame word to use, but will look very good in your house regardless of it being Christmas. I picked two stocking patterns, which obviously that's like one of the most common types of Christmas de decorations that you can find on Ravelry. You definitely have plenty to choose from, but I just chose two that I like. The first one is the December stocking by Petite Knit which is, I believe, her newest stocking pattern. I think she's got another one from last year. But it's just a nice, like, thicker, cabled, textured stocking. It looks really nice. It's an Erin White knit, so it takes less time. And I, I just think it's really pretty, the, what she's created. The other one I like is a little more simpler, but it is still textured and cabled. And it's the Cozy Cabled Stocking. It's a worsted weight pattern, and it's just a little more minimalistic than the other one, but I think they're both very beautiful. I really need to knit myself a Christmas stocking for me and my husband. I We never put our stockings up. I don't know, when it's just two of us, we kind of forget to like do some of the Christmas stuff. A lot of times it gets done like at our parents' house and we go see them, but I really want to make our own traditions and put up Christmas stockings, so at some point I need to knit us some. And the last pattern, Needs no introduction. Christmas gnome. Moment of silence for Christmas gnome. All right, so those are all my Christmas decor patterns. The last section is Christmas themed sweaters. So obviously the most popular Christmas sweater I've seen is the one by Knitting for Olive, the Holly sweater. But uh, I didn't include that one. I feel like everyone's seen that one. I wanted to find some alternatives if you don't want to knit the holly sweater. Some of these are like very over the top, some of these are more subtle, but I think they're all nice in their own way. The first one I found is the Christmas bobble sweater, which is pretty simple. It's just like a simple stockinette sweater with a colorwork yoke that just has this line of Christmas trees, and it's available in kids and adult sizes. It is adorable, and uh, it's available from small to extra large. It's adorable but it's just fingering weight pattern, so you might not have time for it this year. It's gonna take a while, but it is really cute. And then another color work yoke pattern we have is the sleigh ride sweater, which really toes the line between kitschy and Chris very Christmassy and like more so, but it's just a color work sweater with these little, little reindeer gone across them, and Rudolph is one of them, because you can see his red nose. It's a little thicker, so it's not as ambitious as the other one. It's a DK weight pattern, and this one has a lot more sizes. But it, like the other one, it's also top down in the round, seamless. A lot of these are color work yoke patterns, just because I think that's the easiest way to stick on the Christmas decorations. Another one that I found that I feel like is more... It's definitely Christmassy, but it's a little more elegant, kind of reminds me of the holly sweater. It's the Chris Yorn Christmas sweater, and it's another color work yoke that has these little, I guess, maybe holly leaves or like mistletoe with berries going all around it. It's got a little more going on than the holly sweater, but it's a similar idea. And it's a thicker weight pattern, so less time, hopefully. It's an Erin weight knit. 
Yeah, it's holly, twigs, and red berries is what it says. And I feel like this one is like, it's definitely Christmas, but it's really nice looking. Like this is one I feel like you would buy at a store and you could wear it like all throughout winter. And she even knits these other, ver other versions that are not in like the red and green. And it looks really beautiful and like you could wear it all year round. So yeah, that definitely has options, but I really like the Christmassy version. This one is very Christmassy. This is not subtle. This is the Vintage Christmas Lights Pullover. And it's a colorwork yoke with a bunch of Christmas lights on it. Yeah, I feel like you gotta, you gotta have a little bit of fun with yourself to pull this one off. And it's definitely only usable at Christmas, <laughs> maybe a Christmas day or like a Christmas sweater party. I hesitate to say ugly Christmas sweater party, but you know what I mean? So definitely not as versatile as some of the other ones, but very fun indeed. This one is more versatile sweater pattern. This is Christmas in Shetland, which is an all over color work pattern, but still a still a round yoke pattern, I believe. But it's just a little more subtle. It's definitely like Christmassy and winter themed, but I think you could wear this all winter long. It just doesn't feel overtly Christmas, but it would still really work as a Christmas sweater. It's a fingering weight knit, so a fingering weight color work sweater might not be, again, simple to start with now, but still very fun to knit and have, because again, you can wear it after Christmas. You could wear it all winter long, I feel like. This next one is Santa's Garden Pattern, which actually they have available for free. You don't have to like find one of their booklets. It's just called Christmas Sweater, and it's definitely like another kitschy Christmas sweater with a ton of very overt Christmassy designs on it. But it's, it's cute, and they make it look very elegant with Santa's Garden photographing. But it comes in four sizes, so not as much of a range, but it's not a very fitted item to begin with. It's a DK weight knit, meant to be knit in their alpaca yarn. This one is definitely on the line between overly Christmassy and more subtle. Uh, it's called Christmas Day. It's another color work pattern. I don't know if I'm just being tricked by the way she's photographing it to make it think it's more of a fashionable piece, but it feels a little less overt than some of the other ones. It's a DK weight yarn. I do not know that I would knit a Christmas sweater in Cardiff Cashmere Classic, at least not one that I can only wear on Christmas Day, but that's what she uses. Very ambitious. And it only comes in three sizes, but the option is there. Then the most subtle one out of all of them is the Christmas tree sweater, which you could definitely wear all year round. It's just a stockinette Rackland sweater with this little texture of Christmas leaves at the bottom, or Christmas trees. It's like a pearl texture and it's super cute. It's like Christmassy, but it doesn't have to be Christmassy, which I, f I feel like makes for a very good Christmas sweater that can be worn all year round, because that's the thing about sucks about Christmas sweaters is you can only wear them for a short time and sweaters take a long time to make, but this is a good alternative. It's a worsted weight pattern and it comes in sizes extra small to 3XL. So that was a lot. We cover a lot of ground. Hopefully I helped you find a gift for somebody in your life or I just help you find something fun you can knit to get you into the holiday spirit this year. I definitely found some stuff I'd like to knit, and I'm really excited for Christmas so I can give my loved ones their gift, and I can finally stop worrying about knitting stuff for other people. But it is fun, but it's also not fun at the same time. But we are in this season of giving, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, please comment below and let me know what you are going to be knitting for people in your life or for yourself this Christmas. And if you like this video, please subscribe, and I will see you guys again next time. Bye!